for cooking meals to give us good luck in 2014 with our friend Janine Washley from Cloverfields Farm and Kitchen. Good morning to you, Janine. Good morning. All right, our first segment we talked about hangovers. Oh. What foods to eat. Now we're talking about the good luck foods, what we want to prepare and the meaning behind them. That's right. So let's say um, you, you had one of the hangover helpers, you mm -hmm. know, an omelet or something, and um, you've got that box of potato flakes. How about some barbecued uh, pork chops, double cut pork that chops. That sounds good. I'll take and, two, please. And pigs only move forward. So right. pigs are a symbol of good luck because they only move forward towards their goals. Mm -hmm. And one that um, people aren't as aware of, it's a little bit more obscure, mm -hmm. are turkeys scratch backwards. Right. So it, with that scratching backwards, they're covering up their past. They're covering up, you know, bad luck that they, maybe they had in the previous mm -hmm. year, um, you know, so bad relationships, whatever. So that's kind of an interesting one as well. Then, of course, you've got your collards and your cabbage. Green is full or cash. Cash money. And then peas. Um, now, the one I heard, or the <laughs> one that I'm familiar with, is peas are for pennies, um, greens are for cash, mm -hmm. and cornbread is for gold. And then mm -hmm. others know it as peas are for wealth mm -hmm. and cabbage is for health. And then, of course, the wealth part with um, peas and with rice, because Hop and John is a really popular dish, mm -hmm. is that they expand so greatly, and we all want our bank accounts to expand like peas and like rice. All right, so that's pretty go. interesting, right? Yeah, you educated so, me this morning. So I didn't it know was the meaning behind all this stuff. Oh, Let's yeah. go back to the cookies. You missed the cookies. Okay. Well, the cookies are round, and they're shaped like coins. Mm -hmm. And up north in New York is actually where the tradition of a New Year's open house started. Mm -hmm. And so the father of the house, the dad of the house, the man of the house, would go and mend relationships anybody that they've had arguments with that mm -hmm. you know they haven't gotten along with New Year's morning was mm -hmm. the time where you mended those relationships then you invited those people over to your house the wife and the kids got the house cleaned up uh, made cookies in the shape of coins made all of this delicious food and your friends neighbors would all stop in family would all stop in enjoy a bite and move on to the next that's house why you so that's, start with cookies right there you go so these are almond honey cookies mm -hmm. symbolizing coins and then we've got our collards and our turkey legs we've got cream cabbage and you have to have boiled potatoes if you have cream cabbage we've got our double cut barbecue pork chops we've got our cornbread biscuits and you and I are going to knock out a Black eyed pea salad. Unless but I've got a trick. Okay. In the wintertime, onions are hard on you. Right. You know, they Absolutely. just taste terrible. They linger for days. But here's a trick that an Argentinian lady showed me a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. She said, you take boiling water and you pour it over the chopped onions. And so we're going to do that. All right. And this works like a charm because you still retain the crunch of the onions and you stir it up. And basically what you're doing is breaking down the sulfuric compounds in the onions. So does then, it take out the smell too? I have a does. problem with the smell of onions. Yes, it definitely depletes the smell. You put them back into your bowl and you do it a second time and a third time. And just for the sake of time, I'm just going to do it this one other time. And you just stir them around, let, mm -hmm. that, let those compounds come out because we've cut the onion. So we've broken down the cell walls and it makes it just tons easier to do that. You're going to take the black eyed peas, put them into that salad bowl right there. Okay. And those were frozen black eyed peas. If uh, let's say you decide to put a get together together and you go over to the can section, you're probably not going to find any black eyed peas. Run over to the freezer section. It takes 40 minutes to cook fresh black eyed peas. It's okay. totally easy. Great tip. Then you're going to add um, chow chow. Now that's homemade chow How chow. Much? but you All of it? All of it. Okay. And you can find that at Kroger over with the pickles. And that has turmeric, mustard seed, and um, celery seed in it. So that's our flavoring agent. Then you're going to add lots of parsley for color. Okay. And then we're going to add our sweeter onions. All right, put them in Stir there. Stir that in there. And then, at this point, you have to stop and make a decision. Now, if you want to serve this as a side dish, you would mm -hmm. just take the back of your spoon and mash up some peas and serve it warm. Right. But if you want to serve it as a salad, which I highly recommend, we're going to add apple cider vinegar, a little bit of vegetable oil, salt and pepper, stir it up. Got a little touch of hot sauce in there. You're going to put and this look, over cabbage? You can put it over the pork chops, the cabbage, you can eat it with a biscuit, whatever you want. Janine Washley, thank you so you much. Go. Very and informative colorful. this morning. Great. And your dishes are always tasty. And you did a perfect job with that. That looks awesome. All right. For more information, thank you, Janine. On Janine and Cloverfields Farm and Kitchen, you can find that on our screen or go to our website, WDRB.com. If you want some of these recipes, just shoot her an email that's listed on our website as well. She will email you the recipes back and loves to do it. Good to see you, Janine. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.